Time does not exist. Pardon? This is exactly the conclusion that researchers from Australia have now come to and if you want to have a quantum physics existential crisis then by all means stay tuned and if you like it then feel free to leave a thumbs up and a comment because that will get the YouTube algorithm to show this video to even more people. Thanks a lot guys and welcome. Time, it's hard to describe what it actually is, and yet it's definitely the scarcest resource in the universe, because even billionaires can't buy much more time. Even if we eventually achieve breakthroughs in medicine so that people no longer have to die and can in principle live forever, the universe will still only exist for a finite period of time. At some point, at least according to the current state of cosmology, it will end and the universe will die one way or another. So time is a scarce commodity, that's for sure, and yet, most of us might find it very difficult to describe what time is. Is time physically tangible? Is it here somewhere in space? I would be very interested in how you would define time. Feel free to post your answers in the comments, and I'll take the time to respond. For our purposes perhaps first the following definition is sufficient, the universe moves not only spatially, but also temporally and that apparently from a starting point, the Big Bang, to an end point. Time, then, is a linear progression of things. The well-known physicist John Wheeler put it beautifully. Time is what prevents everything from happening at the same time. And in our everyday lives, time is now a fact. Whether we can define it or not. That math exam that went badly is in the past and we can't just write it again tomorrow. Unfortunately, because that would have improved my final grade a lot. But now some Australian physicists are coming around the corner with some really shocking news. Time does not exist. But without time, where is the beginning of this video? And where the end? Could I just as well start again with the greeting now? Why not? So thanks guys and welcome. Just a moment. Things are not quite that simple after all. In order to understand the non-existence of time, we first need to familiarize ourselves with some basic physics. Which theoretical toolboxes do physicists use to understand the cosmos? First, Einsteinian physics, especially general and special relativity, and second, quantum mechanics. While classical Einsteinian physics wonderfully explains the large-scale processes in the cosmos, i.e. the influences of time and space, quantum mechanics is the appropriate theory for the processes in the very, very small. Often classical physics and quantum mechanics are also in apparent contradiction. The smallest particles, for example, can assume a so-called superposition. In other words, they can have two different states at the same time. In classical physics, this is unthinkable. The physicist Erwin Schrödinger set up his famous thought experiment, Schrödinger's cat, to demonstrate that the quantum mechanical rules do not apply to classical physics. Because, you agree with me, a cat cannot be dead and alive at the same time, I think. An elementary particle, on the other hand, can have different directions of rotation, called spins, at the same time, and only when you look does it settle on one. So Schrödinger's cat was only a thought experiment to show the impossibility of transferability of quantum mechanical principles to normal physics. It came, thus no real cats to harm, no worry. But how do we now resolve this conflict between classical physics and quantum mechanics? Couldn't there be a unified theory, which brings both under one hat? There is, and it is called string theory. In string theory, the smallest particles of the cosmos are replaced by strings that can oscillate in up to 11 dimensions. An extremely elaborate theory on which astrophysicists have been researching for decades now, and have found no really definitive proof of the existence of strings. Because of this, other approaches have evolved over time to apply the rules of classical physics, especially gravity, to the quantum level as well. One of the best-known ideas is loop quantum gravity, which assumes that the fabric of space and time consists of a network of extremely small parts called loops. The main idea of loop quantum gravity is that space itself is not a universal container within which the laws of nature play out, but that space itself is an object that follows the laws of quantum physics.
the quantum state of space is thereby described by a network of tiny loops, each of which can have a certain state. So quite similar to the spin of an elementary particle in quantum physics. Because space itself is a quantum object, gravity can be explained as a state of the single loops and therefore only as a quantum physical change of the whole space. Thus, one would have then brought relativity and quantum physics under one hat. Oh dear with such a thing astrophysicists occupy themselves really the whole day? Why do I talk to you now with these cosmological theories? Because in most of the connection theories of classical physics and quantum mechanics, for example in the loop quantum gravity, there is no time. It is simply abolished as a factor. But does this also mean that time really does not exist? Neither in quantum mechanics nor in loop quantum gravity, for example, are chocolate chip cookies mentioned as a factor. Funnily enough, they play no role in these theories, yet we are pretty sure that chocolate chip cookies exist. Yummy. Yet these theories do describe tiny particles that can then assemble into chocolate chip cookies, for example. So chocolate chip cookies do not contradict physical theory. I hope someone will quote me on this sentence someday. The time is a different story. None of the great physical theories foresees particles of which time could be composed. There is nothing expected to be composed. So if time as a factor does not occur in loop quantum gravity, for example, and no factors are apparent from which time could be assembled, then we must rather assume that time does not exist. And maybe this also explains why we had such difficulties at the beginning to define what the time is at all. Because it does not exist. And now? What are we going to do with our lives without time? Dr. Sam Barron, one of the Australian researchers arguing for the non-existence of time in their new book, resolves the dilemma as follows, while physics abolishes time, it seems to leave causality intact, the sense in which one thing can cause another. So perhaps physics is telling us that causality, not time, is the fundamental feature of our universe. So maybe it has always been causality alone that has advanced our lives, not time. One thing causes another, action and reaction. If you subscribe to my channel, I'll be happy. Not a temporal consequence, but a purely causal one. And now subscribe to the channel. So very tricky everything. Anyway, my head is already buzzing properly. Write me in the comments what you think about time after this video. Does it exist or is it just a concept that we humans invented? I would be very interested in your opinion. And the physics simply does not come to the rest, because also with the Hubble constant something is not correct. Be sure to watch the next video, it is as always very exciting. And if you want to support my work a little bit, then treat yourself to one of my t-shirts or real meteorites or astronaut food in my space store. Browse through the store, there's always new, great stuff. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care guys.